Hey there, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Mel and I love to share cooking videos on this channel and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you four crescent roll recipes. Whether you need an easy lunch, a quick appetizer, or even a dessert, I have four recipes that I think you just might like. First, we're gonna start off by making this easy veggie pizza and I love having these for lunches. I'm starting by preheating the oven to 350 degrees and just spraying down a smaller baking sheet this one is about 9 by 13 in size, I believe. It's a little smaller than your average baking sheet. I have one can of crescents that I opened and I'm just going to lay these out, not separating them. And I'm going to press all of them together. You want to make sure you go over the seams in a couple different directions just to make sure that they do not fall apart. That way when you're eating your pizza, the lines don't separate and you end up dropping half your slice. That would really stink. So make sure you press those together super well. Once that's done, you can stick this in the oven and it's only going to cook for about 8 to 10 minutes until it has a really nice golden color. Next, we're going to work on our sauce and this is actually the same dill sauce I make for my chicken bacon pizza. I'll link that below if you haven't tried it. It is so delicious, one of my all-time favorites. For this sauce, you will need 3 tablespoons of mayonnaise, make sure it's not Miracle Whip, 3 tablespoons of sour cream, a half teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of dried parsley, a half teaspoon of dill, a few shakes of salt, a few shakes of pepper, and one tablespoon of half and half, and then you're just going to get that mixed together. If you remember from the pizza recipe, you'll make that sauce a little thinner than this one, but we want this one to stay pretty thick. If you have time to chill the sauce for at least a half an hour, I would recommend doing that. It just thickens it up a little bit and kind of lets the flavor build. Now you're going to go ahead and take your sauce and spread it as evenly as you can over your cooked crescent sheet. Moving on to prepping the veggies, I have a large carrot here. I did just cut the end off and I took the outside layer off and now I'm just grating this up into nice small pieces to go on top of the pizza. I'm also chopping up half of a red bell pepper into very small pieces as well as two green onions and some broccoli. I'm only using about half of this broccoli. You don't need a whole lot. You can add more if you want to. You can honestly use any veggies that you would like to. Now to add all the toppings onto our pizza, I'm first going to use my broccoli. I'm just grabbing a handful of that and sprinkling it over the top. Next I'm adding the red bell pepper and I actually did not use all of the pepper that I cut up so I just put that back in the refrigerator but you can add as much as you want. Next we're going in with the carrots. The carrots are definitely a nice touch on here, nice bright color. And then over top of the carrots, we're going to add some shredded mild cheddar cheese. You only need about a half cup to a cup, but go crazy if you want to. And then I'm going to go back over with my red bell pepper, a little bit of broccoli, and a little bit of green onion. Here is what my finished plate looked like. I love veggie pizza, hands down, one of my favorite things to make. So quick and easy, it's pretty light and very, very flavorful. Something I really enjoy doing is just sticking it in the microwave for like 30 seconds, just enough to melt the cheese. It's still nice and soft, not too crispy, but the heat melting the cheese just makes it so good. Next, we are making this Italian crescent ring, and I'm gonna start by preheating my oven to 375. And I do wanna apologize, in this recipe, my tripod broke. This is back towards Christmas that I did this recipe. So you will see it falling a couple times. I couldn't fix it, it's the best I could do. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with this recipe. You're gonna need two cans of crescent rolls, and I'm just going to begin laying these out, overlapping each other just a little bit on the bigger ends. And we're gonna create a sun shape with these.
As you lay these down, just use your fingers to press them together gently. And then this is where my tripod started to fall. I do apologize again for that. Right now I'm taking one container of honey ham. I'm just folding those pieces a little bit and then we're going to add those right around the entire circle until you use the entire container. We're gonna repeat that same step except this time we are using some hard salami. And again, we're gonna use the entire container. And then next we're moving on with the pepperoni. I was using turkey pepperoni this time and I just went ahead and added those onto the ring all the way around. Add as many as you want. Next, we're adding some provolone cheese and I decided to break my cheese in half, that way it fit better. And I just added that around. I think I only used five or six slices. Next, I'm adding some banana peppers and I am not a fan of banana peppers. I hate them, but my husband does enjoy them. Usually it's the other way around with these types of things. I'm gonna go ahead and just add that to a small section. I made this on Christmas, so my brother-in-law was here, so I only put them on a small portion. And then after that, you're going to just take the edges and you're gonna fold those over and tuck them underneath. This is going to bake in your oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. At the 20 minute mark, I would just check on it and make sure it's doing okay at that point. Right before it finishes up in the oven, go ahead and make this little topping. You're going to need two tablespoons of unsalted butter with a couple shakes of pepper and about a fourth teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I did transfer over my Italian ring to my cutting board just so it would be easier to cut and serve. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that over the top of the entire thing. And then you can go ahead and cut it and it's ready to eat. Here is what it looks like on my plate. You can choose to serve this with Italian dressing or marinara. I had both available. I really enjoy it in Italian dressing though. This is really, really good. A great appetizer for Christmas. We usually just do appetizers and it's usually gone very quickly. We both really enjoy jalapeno popper items, so you know I had to try these out. I got started by preheating my oven to 375 degrees. In my skillet, I went ahead and started cooking five thick slices of bacon. All of these have just been cut in half to fit better and cook better in here. Once my bacon was done, I just added them over to a paper towel lined plate, let them kind of cool off a little bit, and then I went ahead and chopped those up pretty small. I'm also going to be chopping up two green onions and one jalapeno. If your jalapeno is a little small, you might wanna use two. Now that I have everything all chopped up and ready to go, I also have one eight ounce block of cream cheese that I just microwave for about 30 seconds to soften it up a bit. I'm gonna add everything we just chopped into this bowl as well. And then next you're going to add about a cup to a cup and a half of mild cheddar cheese as well as some garlic powder. But with the garlic powder, I want you to add as much as you like. I add about one teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half just because we love garlic in this house. If I were you, I would just start slowly, add about a half teaspoon, mix everything together. You can give it a taste, it won't make you sick or anything, everything's been cooked through. And then if you want to add more, have that more prominent garlic taste, then go for it. To fill these crescents, you'll just need to spread them out and then you will just add a big spoonful of that filling into the center and then pull each of the corners up, pinch them together and then go around and pinch all the little holes shut until you have a nice round ball just like this with no holes. You will just continue doing that until you filled all eight of your crescents. Once that's done, those will go in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes. 
I would just keep an eye on them. They cook fairly quickly. You'll want to pull them out when they start getting that beautiful golden color on the tops. Here they are all finished up. We really do enjoy these. Me and my husband love jalapeno popper anything. And honestly, these would be great for a game day snack, appetizer, or if you just need a side dish to make with your dinner, these are perfect. The last recipe in this video, I have made these once before, but they are just so good. One of my favorites, air fryer Oreos. If you have not made these, they are beyond easy and so delicious. So you will just need one package of croissants for this and eight Oreos and some powdered sugar. That is all and they turn out so good. So what I'm doing first is I'm just going ahead and kind of taking my croissants and breaking them into two pieces and then you'll just press those little lines together to make a nice big rectangle. Then you'll cut them down the center to make two smaller squares. In each one of the squares, you'll just add an Oreo to the center, fold in the corners first, and then go around and just squeeze the rest of the little holes together. After it's all rolled up, I kind of just take the whole thing, move it around in my hands a little bit, and even out the dough so all the dough isn't all focused on the bottom of the Oreo. Then it's going straight into my air fryer. I can fit about five of these at a time in my air fryer. I like to try to space them apart because they do expand a bit in there. And then you will just cook these for about five minutes. There's no need to preheat your air fryer or anything like that. You'll just set it to 375 degrees for five minutes. Tell me these do not look absolutely stunning. They're so delicious. They will be really hot, so I just use some tongs to pull those out and set them out on a plate, and then I start the second batch. Once they're all done, you can choose if you wanna add butter. I have done that before. You can melt about two tablespoons of butter and spread that across all of those before adding your powdered sugar. This time I skipped the butter and honestly, they were just as good. Look at those, oh my gosh, so tasty. Definitely one of my favorites extremely easy to make and a little better than when you go to the fair and they're just completely soaked in oil. We love these. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and it gave you some good ideas for things you just want to try out, kind of change up what you eat a little bit, or just have some fun in the kitchen. And I will see you guys back here on Sunday with a new video.